So yesterday we ran a poll and the results were basically split between Africa, Death by Snoo Snoo campaign, and uh, the Venice Holy Wars sort of Deus Vault playthrough. And basically the, the Amazon Warrior one sort of won it by only a couple of percent. So I figured I'd kind of meet you both halfway rather than, you know, 40% of you being kind of annoyed that your vote didn't win. So what I'm going to do with it then is we're going to play as the, the female warrior women tribe over in the Canary Islands. One of the hardest starts in CK2, in my opinion, because it, you're, you're a single province count, basically. However, it does give us the opportunity to loot. It does give us the opportunity to expand out. And with CK2+, Plus, we can see some of the... Oh, sorry, with, with CK2 Holy Fury, I should say. There are some new features added, which allow you to play as a, a woman in a merchant republic. They allowed, um, basically, agnatic merchant republics, right? If you get up to total... Um, Total equality of women. I've adjusted some things, let's say, so that we can, as a woman, reform a Merchant Republic. And obviously, if we reform it as a woman, we automatically have that enabled as default. So we can play as a Merchant Republic still. We can play as the female warrior tribe. So I kind of like the idea of the looting Merchant Republic. Sort of what I wanted to do last series, but then I got a little bit <clears throat> sick of gavel kind. However, there's another big thing that, in, that, that came with Holy Fury in the form of the whole African trade route system, like the gold rush and the, the new trade route mechanics all the way through the Sahara Desert as well. It would also let us look at that, and basically we can build this sort of uh, bloodthirsty republic. We can reform the religion again. We can go for this whole monopolization on the gold system as well, and I think this could be kind of a really cool start. Again, we are going to play as women, though, for the whole thing, because I did sort of promise the whole warrior women thing, eh? And that did win the vote. But what I will say, for those of you who did want to see a more dedicated Venice Deus Vault campaign, when CK2 Plus is updated to work with Holy Fury, probably, from what the devs are saying, it could be quite some time. So don't expect it within the next few weeks or whatever. Um, but when that comes out, CK2 Plus does a lot for the trade and a lot for Republics. I figured that would give us a much more cohesive, um, a much grander Venice run, if you want to look at it like that. So this is just another one of those, uh, another one of those smaller campaigns, I guess. Let's do it. So, Ethnicity Berber, we are starting as Berber. We're going to be, uh, the chiefess of the Canary Islands, naturally, because we want to be a big old powerful warrior woman. Let's do that then. Okay, uh, as for a name, I've no idea yet, so I'll think about that in a second. And basically, I'll just try and get it set up as we did before. Now, taking Stressed and Wounded, it's weird that they've added this back, because this seems like a very, very powerful start. Because you can basically just take Strong, and then that cancels out one of them, but you're also basically getting strong for free, right? So, or, or very little age, I should say. It's like, what, four years to get strong? Or you, the downside of this is, out of all of this, minus one health, um, you know, plus four to our age. But to get that really powerful congenital trait to start off with seems fairly fine to me. I'll definitely take that deal. Um, we'll take Direct Leader. Now, we are going to be doing a lot of raiding in the early game, so we do want to join one of those warrior societies, and that's going to benefit itself. Then we can use that gold to build up our market village and obviously flip to a merchant public, but we'll still be able to carry on the raiding and the, the warrior lodge side of things, so that'd be kind of cool, I think. Um, Giant does kind of screw you a little bit because it reduces fertility, and obviously as um, playing as a woman... You can't have, you can have consorts now, which are, are male concubines, but you can still only get, you know, pregnant once, right? You still can't get pregnant three times, unlike if you're playing as a man with three female concubines. So we do have to sort of rely on our fertility being somewhat higher. So I'm not going to take Giant for this playthrough. Um, I'm not going to do a huge amount with the character customizer, I think. I, I want it to be, because with this you can really metagame it and play a very unbalanced game. I do want to keep it fairly fairly balanced because it is somewhat broken and it with with the new holy fury patch anyway um that i'm kind of happy to go with oh man i'd like attractive what could we take to get attractive as well we take depressed and just go carousing because we've got stressed and depressed we immediately take the carousing focus we could try and get rid of those immediately wounded will heal into scar which will increase our sex appeal as well this is probably the, the best start we could hope for i'd like to get rid of a couple more age here and there so we'll take deceitful we'll take cynical as well takes down to 27 years old um that's okay. I mean, a little bit more definitely wouldn't hurt. What about, like, stubborn? Personal combat skill plus three, vassal opinion minus five. We don't have any vassals. It's gonna give us plus one stewardship, which will help out with the whole, um, will help out with the whole merchant public side of things. Not that's gonna be relevant for this character, because we need to obviously be a reformed faith before we can do that. Moneylander gives us a minus three for plus one stewardship. Naturally, we'll take that one. All right, we're 19 years old. That, fit, that seems like a good start to me. What about your name? Um, Aisha. How about Aisha? Throog. Classic Throog Dynasty. We played as the egg. Now we are back. I feel like Throog needs uh needs needs her own place in the CK2 canon, right? Um as for the shield, 
I haven't really played around with the African shields. I think they've actually changed them since Holy Fury, right? They've definitely changed the on-map shields, anyway. Um, let's go for one that reflects us. Big old angry women with big old pointy spears. Um, that's kind of nice. I like that. Let's go for, yeah, green background, red spears. That'll do. Fine. Aisha Throog. Good luck. This is going to be quite a difficult playthrough, I think. I, I, I don't think it's going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. Like I said, we've got the gold rush to deal with and all those new mechanics to see. We've got reform the African religion, see what we can get out of that one as well. I'm really interested because I, I don't normally play in Africa. I definitely don't start in Africa, so this will be kind of interesting. Oh, look, look at that. We do have that nice little new shield there. Right, so immediately I'm kind of concerned because we obviously have a large Muslim powerhouse right next to us there. Um, the Umiads are obviously right there as well, so we do have to be somewhat careful. They're not going to be interested in us because I'm pretty sure... Oh, we can actually count as their du jour duchy, do we? Ooh, that's risky. This is a very, very difficult start. I didn't quite realize how difficult this would be. Let's flip over to, uh, like I said, carousing immediately to start off with here. And we'll also go for groom and heir. Societies. We are allowed to join the Warrior Lodge, the Children of the Storm. So absolutely, we're going to fight to prove ourselves. As we're already wounded, that's probably not the best idea. I should have waited for this to heal first. But we can give it a go. Still six personal combat. I think we'll be fine. So we have lots of new mechanics here. We've got Tell a Campfire Story. Our C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. Uh, Abrahamic Syncretism. Which I guess we would be able to pick um, a Muslim, maybe sympathy for Muslims or something along those lines. That wouldn't hurt. That would obviously give them a bigger opinion of us and us a bigger opinion of them, make them less likely to attack us. We might also want to go to the effort of swaying this dude. Just to keep him, to keep on his good side so that he doesn't immediately smash us. Now apparently on this start we get boats. We do get boats. We can immediately start the playthrough raiding, which I like. Now I'm not sure I like us leading troops though. That's the kind of downside here. Let's get our council and everything set up first. Uh, steward, spy master, and court chaplain. Now, because we are an attractive women, women, <laughs> because we are an attractive women, all of our male courtiers and all of our male vassals are going to like us. Like this dude, plus fifty-nine attraction to strong, plus ten attraction to attractive, plus thirty. That's really good. You know, everyone's much more likely to like us and not join murder plots against us, which I feel like is quite fair. Um, improved statecraft, I feel like is not a bad idea with that regard. Organizing a raid to get a few more troops here and there couldn't hurt. Same with the legend. And I'm actually going to do the same with Zeal as well. There is a way to make, from what one of you guys have been telling me, these uh, Zeal Warriors and the Legend Warriors into Raiders. Just by opening up the regular army management screen. So this thing here and actually moving them across units. So actually moving them from this one to a raiding unit, for example. So that would make a lot more sense. And it's also going to give us a lot more opportunity to actually steal a decent amount of gold. Now... This is really going to kick off when we get to those higher levels, when we get to the Reaver level of the Children of the Storm. This is really going to kick off. Especially because all these provinces are a lot more rich post-Holy Fury because of the gold, right? Oh, and they have access to Infidel Tax. Uh, the African religion actually has that as its reformation, doesn't it? Um, Totem Guardians. Uh, religious taxation of subjects of a different religion group. That's awesome. So that's also going to buff up the whole religion, uh, the whole, uh, sorry, I should say, Republic side of things. Especially if we take a lot of land, especially in Northern Africa, which isn't going to be the traditional African religion there. So, we have a lot of complimenting things going on in this campaign. This seems like it could be kind of cool. Um, do we have our commander set up? Probably not. Oh my god, these are really our best boys. Jesus. Um, Dalal, are you a lady? You kind of you kind of look like a lady. I think you're a lady, but I'm not sure. Um, I shouldn't really assume, should I? And basically, anyone else who's capable of leading troops that isn't doing anything else. Right, there we go. You can lead my raiders, because I want to sit at home and heal up before we do anything else. Let's do it. Now, I'm going to raid our direct neighbor who I'm trying to improve relations with. No, I think I'm going to actually go to the Umiads because southern Spain is, is very rich at this point in the game. Or southern Iberia, I should say. Let's speed up a little bit. Hi, Chief Arizzo of Canem and the Children of the Storm have chosen War Chief Leon. Uh, 11 personal combat. We have six. He's probably going to beat us then. Jesus. Getting the trait wounded. I mean, we already had that anyway, so I can't really complain. Got black eye, though. We should be okay. I think we'll be fine from this. Come on, carousing. Oh, God. Movement lock. Um, kind of forgot about that. Yep, we've got the... Oh, God, we have the horrible squares again. Oh, God, they're back. How has this still not been patched? I, this is an issue with the bigger interfaces mod, right? With movable lock. I can't believe this is still a thing that's happening. All right, let me go and fix this quickly. Not only that, but apparently we have some nice music as well. Hey, that's kind of win-win. All right, so who's undefended and ready to have their gold stolen? Then obviously we won't be able to take much during this early game. Oh, let's go to the economy mode instead. Um... It would be more beneficial going for somewhere that's much harder to defend itself, like, uh, man, I was going to say, like, Malta, but apparently not. Um, so those new Greek buildings they've added. Those are nice. Those are much better. All right, um, we could hit somewhere like Mallorca. Oh, man, they're so, everywhere's so well defended at this stage. Shit. Um, guess we'll just go for 
eastern parts of Spain, because there are a couple of provinces there we could try and grab some gold from. It's not going to be an easy start by any stretch of the imagination. We need to start getting some capital together before we can really, you know, really pack a punch. When we're done with carousing, I am going to flip over to business focus just for those early investments. You know, debasing the mint for 100 gold. This level of the game is incredibly good. Right, we need to find a genius unmarried man. Um, load filter. Men, my religion, my culture. No, we need to load this one. Uh, change from women to men and actually save that a slot to instead. There we go. All right. Um, who have we got? We've got anybody who wants to join the court? No. So we're going to have to bribe some people here and there. Oh, he might. He is 31. Um, who likes us the most? Because I'm just basically going to go with that. Hang on. He's lost all and a master seducer and Midas touched. Wilhelm. You'll do. Wilhelm, I need you. Come to come to court. Take consort. No. Invite to court. No. We'll have to buy a favor from him. Man, that's going to be expensive. All right. I'll mark him a special interest now. We'll come back to you in a minute. All right. And obviously, we don't have to really care about, you know, people cheating on us as a woman. It's not like we have to worry whether or not the baby's ours. So that's absolutely fine. That's So normally, I probably wouldn't go for a guy like that. The whole Master Zeus are lustful thing. But in this scenario, it probably works pretty well. Um, no, nah, he's not my type. Sorry. I'm, I need to, like, heal up before we do anything else. Literally anything else. All right. Let's keep an eye on this. Play this I'm going to play this a little more carefully than I normally would. So I'm going to retreat troops out rather than just letting them get smashed. Already 14 gold. What a great start. All right, let's get you guys out there. Now, if we start moving, they're just going to move straight back, aren't they? Uh, probably. Yeah, they are. Okay, fair enough. We need to find somewhere a lot easier to raid, a lot less defended. Um, you know, parts of France are also pretty good. Was that Hastin? King Hastin of Upper Brittany. Huh. He'll do. Let's go and ha have over there. Mainly because he hasn't got any, you know, allies at this point in the game. All right, let's see what we've got. Um, 50... Oh, man. That province, what was that? Yeah, Rex is heavily undefended. Heavily undefended? Is that the right expression? Oh, man, he's also being attacked by Brittany as well. Not much of a surprise there. So we'll move in and just sort of sweep his capital out while he's busy. Nice. Thank you. I'll be taking this. That seems a bit ironic, eh? How much can we get from that? It's not going to be a huge amount of gold to start off with, but it will add up very, very quickly. Again, as soon as she's healed, she can be leading the uh, she can be leading the assault. Now, when we can siege provinces down with the Reaver trade, that's when things are really going to start getting out of control. We might as well just go through all these war-torn provinces, eh, and try and grab as much gold as we can from them. Now, it might not seem like much, but it is a pretty decent amount, to be fair. Right, let's move you up and head across. These guys have 18 gold kicking around. Thank you, don't mind if I do. We're already up to 52. Man, seems like a really good start for us. And how much are these boats costing? We're actually breaking even with the boats as well, so this is all just profit. That's the issue with early game Scandinavia especially, is you have to be very careful of your boat upkeep. Because it generally ends up costing you more than your loot. Particularly until the Viking Age kicks in. Alright, how are we doing? Okay, that one's useless. We've got no gold there. A little bit to grab from there. We'll just basically do a full load of, of uh, boats. Take them back and then I'll try and start building up the market city immediately. So we've also got taxes coming in. Oh god, that's not great. That's really bad. Did I not get a court physician? Um, <coughs> whoops. Probably should have remembered that, eh? I think I paid attention to my commanders and absolutely nothing else in hindsight. Right, so let's get basically anybody. It doesn't matter at this stage. It's not like we've got vassals to please. Here you go. Um, anybody in my court who doesn't particularly like me, you can have some stuff. Uh, just so they don't join murder plots, that type of thing. And we should be good. Uh, best tutor. I mean, it probably is this guy, despite the fact that he's very terrible. He does have the patient trait, which does help education to a small... I think it increases their chance of success by another 12.5%, so we will go with that. Um, yeah, I'll also assign commanders, why not? Two loyalists, one zealot, one pragmatist, one glory hand. That's a pretty decent council. We've basically got the winning vote, assuming we uh, bribe at least one person there. All right, over 75 gold. Is anywhere else... Oh, what about Cornwall and Devon? They're shitholes, they'll do. Oh, I left my troops behind. Classic. Um, oh, wow, we can actually siege it to and down. Do I really want to stay here for another... Man, it wouldn't be too much of a bad idea. Why not? Let's, let's wait and see how much gold we get out of this. I'm actually going to go up to speed 5 for a while then. Why not? Um, oh, careful though. We're dead. We are dead. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, game. Strong and mighty Dongo? Yes, Dongo. I would do battle in your name, Dongo. <laughs> He's the patron saint of our realm. Patron Saint Dongo. Doesn't really seem appropriate for a round full of women, but there we go. Your steward, Abaza, has suggested you build a great monument to display of... Oh, now, what's our succession law? Absolute Cognatic Eldership. That is exactly what I like to see. So, Agnatic is obviously men. Agnatic Cognatic, men and women. Absolute Cognatic, women is preferred. Or women are equal, I should say. That one, abs Agnatic Cognatic is men come before women. This is completely equal. That worked out incredibly well. That was just a pure coincidence that that happened to be the law. It's kind of expecting needing to change it, but, you know, that's incredible. Um, a monument to Dongo. Uh, a monument dedicated to my house and- Oh man, it's gotta be to Dongo, hasn't it? 
Classic Dongo. Please don't kill me this time, Dongo. I'm a, I'm a low. Oh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Holy shit! What a great loot. All right, bring that home. Let's try. Let's spend it on a hospital or something. Spend it on some uh, medical care for me. Do you want to become close friends with Captain Kabagi of the Hausa Company? He seems like a really good guy to become friends with. So absolutely, this is friendship. Hey, old fledgling. Rumors there are great spoils waiting behind the walls of Infa. Infa is within the kingdom of the guy that I'm trying to, uh, trying to get to my side. But honestly, if we build up quick enough. We are at a great defensive advantage because the only way they can get war scores by sieging this province. And obviously, if we've got our troops there, they're going to need pretty much three times our numbers if you include the half morale they start off with, plus the boat bombing as well. So, we have so much here. Moorish Cavalry Barracks. So, I will, like, full mod list is in the description. Obviously, we're not playing Iron Man. I am playing with some mods enabled because if you want to watch somebody play Iron Man, there's, there's definitely better people than me at this. Market Town 1 gives tax income plus 1. That was basically what I was going to go for, seeing as Prestige is going to pay for the rest of our buildings. So the more money we've got earlier, the more we can invest over the course of the campaign, right? So let's go for that Market Town. Um, now, I've modded C back to being the actual button where you confirm things, and I'm automatically pressing Enter now. It's, it's really fucked with my brain. Uh, do we have a trade route here? I should probably check out the trade map mode. So these are our goals. So these are going to be the very important gold sites we're going to get in the Trans-Saharan trade route. There's also a rare event called the Gold Rush, where you basically just get a thousand gold flat. Because you're that successful, I assume. Maybe it's done by stewardship, I'm not entirely sure. That's what I aim to find out with this campaign. So there's quite a lot of them kicking around, eh? And these are what we want to take. Potential trade post, potential trade post. I like this new trade post system. It, it, it's much easier for telling how much gold is along the trade route. And basically, it's all amongst this side of the map as well. So they're obviously the side closest to us. I don't think we're ready to go to war with this dude, and I don't think we will be for many, many generations. But when we are, he actually got three of these posts within his domain already, right? Yeah, one, two, three up there, close to Gibraltar. So we'll try and grab all of those when we can. But again, long-term playthrough. Ideally, we want to try and get ourselves healed up a little bit more. Now, what's it? It's this one that gives us the more resilience battle injuries. Which one gives us the higher chance of healing? Or maybe that is it, and I'm, I'm forgetting it. Yeah, I guess it is. Oh, now that's interesting. We've also got an option here, Create Fetish. Create special masks and idols that increase their prowess in battle. That's cool. So I didn't realize that this one actually gave us a, an, an even bigger bonus. And do we get the heroic bloodline from this? Can we still do the whole call to glory? Is that it? No, which one was it? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe that is. Maybe, maybe create fetish is the equivalent of that where we have to fill up the bar. Not entirely sure. Um, if you could go ahead and heal, that wouldn't hurt. Now, I will try and get rid of uh, wounded and stressed before we do anything else. So let's invite everybody in our court carousing them. Why the hell not? Now, in theory, all the men should say yes because we are an attractive, strong lady. Uh, he's going to say no. Oh, man, that's almost... Was that? Three people have said no there? That's pretty incredible. That's a good turnout. If we can get rid of either, that's going to increase our life expectancy tenfold. Because right now, what are we at? We're at minus one health. Oh, my God. We're actually at minus five health. The only thing keeping us alive is the strong trait right now. Um, I know you've been feeling down recently. My court physician, Heidi, has said to me, try drinking this. There are risks. I mean, we can't be at bigger risk. Fuck it. Let's try it. Come on, please. Let's get it started. Okay, well, we've got the carousing either way. Perhaps I should use my extensive military knowledge to impress Sultan Yaya II. My military exploits are sure to impress him. By the way, uh, you know that province of uh, Infa? Let me tell you my plans to go loot that. Sure, why not? Let my rule begin. Lose the trait stress, but gain the trait arbitrary. Or we gain the trait just. I'm playing the long game here. We'll play for honor, and we lose. So I'm glad we didn't play for money there. Um, softened. Naturally, we are a very nice lady, despite the fact we're, we're on the verge of dying. 30% chance of losing stress. Please, game. Come on, throw me a bone here. Dongo. I'm fucking Dongo. You've decided to visit the shrine in the Holy Grove and make a sacrifice in honor of your ancestors. I want a long and healthy life. What are we going to be sacrificing to them? Uh, I don't really want severely injured, so I'm going to sacrifice my good friend, Adria. He will serve them well. Plus, that's our first kill. Off the campaign. There we go. Right on our kill list. What would be nice to see is all the kills of your... Oh, do dead characters, do you still see their kill lists? I'm going to assume no. Um, but just for posterity's sake, let's see if we can't find somebody. Um, Charles the Bold? Oh, yeah, I started in <laughs> A69. All right, yeah, fair enough. Um, I want to find, like, a... I assume Carl the Great ha would have a kill list. No. All right. It'll be interesting to see when we know that we there is a character with kills already. And the ancestors bestow their blessings on me. Dongo, please. I need your healing Dongo. Um... I'll ask him. Yeah, let's let's spend some time with our enemy. Yes. Uh, attractive trait. Gonna give it plus 20. Stubborn trait gives plus 10. Or we can just give plus 5. Absolutely. Look, we're an attractive lady. We've got some private time together. Lose the trait infection. All we needed to do was go and bang this dude in Marrakesh. Excellent. Classic remedy there. Oh, there we go. And our, and our monument to Dongo is done. A grand ceremony was held in Dongo's honor. 
Never going to get over that. And what a celebration indeed. Tales of it will be told for as long as the monument stands. Watch over Canarius. 250 piety. That seems like a good deal to me. Holy monument and monthly piety gain plus 10%. The old wound is healed. It's all, it's all coming up. Chief Des Aisha right now. Speaking of coming up, Chief Def... Chief Def... Chief Des Aisha, we need to get married. That was going to be a good joke, and then, I, and then I fucked it. Right, okay. Uh, Wilhelm. My good friend Wilhelm, who is now a priest. I'm pretty sure I can convince you away from your priestly life. Uh, by favor. Oh, shit. Where did all my gold go? Why did I spend my gold on? What the hell did I spend my gold on? Oh, was it the monument? You know what? In hindsight, that makes sense. Okay, let's go raid for Wilhelm. Um, raise your dongos, please. For Wilhelm. Alright, she can actually lead the troops now, seeing as all, she, all that's wrong with her now is stressed. Wait, she looks straight depressed. I didn't even notice. That must be what that potion did. Hey, that's pretty good. Alright, uh, economy map mode. Let's see what we're up for. You know what? Why don't we go and raid that province? Fuck it. We've made friends with them a little bit. I'm sure we'll be uh, a lot less angry now that I've already, you know, softened them up a bit. Right, what's info, wasn't it? Yeah. Let's take out info. Win-win. You know, we're going to get some gold. What do we, do we actually have to... Oh, we became invigorated. Is this the work of the ancestors? Fertility plus 10% and health plus 0.5. That's pretty decent. Do we have to actually siege it down? Um, loot a province to gain the riches. Okay, so we actually do have to straight up loot it. So burn it down. So that's not possible. Um, we're going to have to wait for quite some time before we can do something like that. Uh, let's go back to the economy map mode and see what we're looking for. I think generally we're just going to be running the same route for quite some time. Like, these provinces here have a shit ton of gold just kicking around. So, I'll definitely go for these ones above anything else. Kind of worried they could just raise an army bigger than, you know, our raiders straight on top of us from the, from this province. So, we do have to be somewhat careful here. Especially if we get captured in battle, that wouldn't be good. Alright. Um, these guys just ran off to war. So, they've left themselves completely undefended as well. Thank you very much. My military exploits are sure to impress him. Hey, do you remember that time I stole some of your gold? Wasn't that great? Plus 10. Softened. Again, it doesn't last very long. I, I still don't entirely like the whole Sway events because by the you have to sort of keep it going for as long as you want to keep that character happy because obviously they disappear quite soon. So we've got five years on one. We've got nine years on another. It does seem like quite a long time, but when you're actually trying to you know stop this guy invading you, it's pretty much we're just going to have to be consistently swaying him. So I don't know. I, there might be a way to metagame that I haven't found yet. I'll, I'll have to keep messing around with it, see what we can do. Right. Still from... Oh, this one we can actually see is Siege down. So absolutely we will. Don't mind if I do. And this should fill up the boats. Yeah, goodbye. Thank you. Alright, how much did we get? 65 gold. Thank you very much. In fact, we probably wasted a lot of that. Alright. Uh, praised by the elders. Nice. Hydar has been going around Canarius for a few days now. Praising me as one of the wisest rulers in Canarius. Knowing that one of the oldest, most esteemed people in the realm supports me. Oh, that's cool. Because we've got the elder council. Right, so this is... Another new thing we're seeing with Holy Fury here, man, we're really ticking a lot of boxes with this campaign, is the Eldership government type, which basically a Council of Elders, this is what I was talking about with, uh, during the Russia campaign, the Council of Elders actually get to vote on your future heir, so keeping them happy is basically the best way to do it. It's almost like um, the, it's almost similar to the Republic succession, except rather than, you know, the whole gold thing, you can just spend that gold on impressing people directly rather than putting it into a campaign. So, good practice, I'd say. All right, 140 gold, Wilhelm. Wilhelm, Virail Wilhelm, let's get you to court, Wilhelm. Thank you. Come and join me. Uh, literally and figure. Chancellor Wilhelm. Oh, why do I fall for this every single time? I was blinded by his beauty. Uh, you can die then. Sorry, you, you need to die. And the second we kill him, we'll get Wilhelm to our court. Should I go and marry just a temporary husband until then? Why is no one. Excuse me? Do I want to send some harlots? Highly paid harlots. Uh. Organize a private encounter. I feel like we can do it personally better, seeing as we're strong and attractive. He said no, because he's a dick. Uh, yeah. Actually, I want to... Oh, fuck it. I'll just manually invite them. Sod it. Yeah, join, join my plot. It's time to it's time to kill a man. Wow. And just so I finished inviting them all, we're already killing him. Thank you. Right. When he dies, we need to pause it. And then invite Wilhelm to our court before somebody else gets to hire him. Thank you. Thank you. No, he's immediately stayed on the council there. How annoying. Oh, well, hang on. No, no, this is what we're after because this guy's a different heir. So he should have his own council set, which means Wilhelm will be free. Okay, so that did kind of work. Uh, not quite as well as I was hoping there. All right, Timothy. Time for you to, Tim, uh, go away. Invite to... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that was terrible. All right, uh, to the clever chief, Des. Thank you. Are you sure? Your wisdom and mercy are legendary. Thank you. Um, Can we send our own spy master there? Do we have a better spy master? Absolutely not. Good lord. All right, we send our own spy master. What is our diplo range? Holy shit. Oh, did I set it on unlimited? 
Whoops, I'll turn that off for the next episode. I didn't mean to do that. That must be, I just carried on the rules over from Russia. I didn't realize I'd actually set that one up last time. All right, well, we'll fix that in post, I guess. Baron Vasil of Bayer Diorama has immediately let me know that we're going to kill. Wilhelm, precious Wilhelm. Yes. Wilhelm, you are now in my court. All right, well, that worked perfectly. To the beauty. Oh, <laughs> Wilhelm, you're so kind. Um, send him a gift. No, invite him carousing then. Let's try and win him over before we do anything else. Um, let's invite you carousing. And basically, I'll just do this again to try and get rid of stress, which I think we still are, right? And then we're at 100% strength. We can start bashing out the uh, the society focuses and actually get a lot of good raiding done. Um, would you like to come carousing? Oh, man, we've got kind of a large court now. Kind of hoping for a much smaller game. I do like playing the smaller game, I will admit. Like a single powerhouse of a province. Playing taller is just so much more fun it's... Much less managing done on, like, a realm level. And you can focus on the managing on a personal level a lot more. So really buffing up your dynasty and your own personal character. Right. Let's go carousing, team. Oh, my God. Okay. One person said no. I thought we were going for a full house then. Two people said no. Three. Well, you know what? That's pretty good considering we've got a court of uh, 14 people. 11 people carousing. That seems pretty decent. Let's get it started. You're my best friend. We became best friends with Dalal, another elder. That's really good news because she also didn't like us. So they're more likely to obviously vote for us, like I said. Alright, Diplomacy plus two, thank you. And there's a chance of losing stress. Now, I'd like to also get Game Master from the Crowsing Focus. Damn it, still no luck. Alright, um, there we go. dalala has been going around Canaris for a few days now, praising me. This is working out incredibly well. Like, accidentally the best playthrough. Right, besides the fact that we died, but ignore that. Right, Wilhelm. Matrilineal. Matrilineal Wilhelm. Thank you. Uh, do we respect wealth or do we want prestige? I think I'll take the prestige, seeing as that's obviously going to be building up our capital. Speaking of which... We should probably go for anything that gives us levy size. We've got 5% there. 5% levy size and garrison. That's going to give us 60 light infantry. Let me do the maths here. So that's actually slightly more than 5%. It doesn't seem like it. So 60 light infantry seems like nothing, but that will actually give us more than 5%. Um, Moorish cavalry barracks seem a much better idea, though. So it's going to give us 26 cavalry with also some bonuses. We can get 30 archers, or we can get morale of armies plus 10% and 10% levy reinforcement rate. Ooh. Um... I would like to go for the actual number of troops to make the sieging easier. So I'm actually going to go for the light infantry because that's slightly higher than 5%. Um, that way, obviously, we've got more chance of obviously having, you know, provinces that we can siege down there because we're hopefully going to dwarf their garrison size at that point. Hey, do you want to put these... No, no, let's just keep raiding. Why would I not be raiding? Always. Shit. Well, just as I was retreating there, we got caught. But we actually gained the trait either organizer or unyielding, both of which are incredibly good. Organizer I like because it would give us... Not only the retreat, which will be, which is great for rulers, but the movement speed as well means that if we see an army that's going to get to us and capture us, we're still going to escape in time because of the plus 20% movement speed, unless they are also an organizer, but that's quite rare. Or we go for your unyielding. Uh, defense, which is also relevant when you're retreating. So, for example, in a situation like this, I'm actually going to go with organizer. Yeah, I feel like that's not a bad plan. Now, I feel like we're already retreating from this army. Yeah, I did say retreat, which is fine. Keep some raiders going for the uh, rest of these raids here. I'm going to go for you because you could gather a lot of gold since we last burnt down the place. I don't know where they're getting it all from. Thank you very much. And off we go. On to the next one. Astorius is normally a good province for this. Oh, uh, no. They're too well defended this time. So let us let me try and work out this whole uh, moving these boys onto the same uh, raider flank. Do you want to become more than good friends with Warchief Nur of the Band of the Hippo? Uh, I think this is friendship. Now, I, I think our husband, you know, he's a great guy. He's got really high fertility, like insanely high fertility. 20% um, plus another 15% plus his genius plus his master seducer, so we're going to like him as well. Why don't we like him? Zealous? Oh, shit. He's zealous. Um, right, let's invite him carousing and see if we... Oh, we can offer him concubines. That seems a bit strange. Your husband can have concubines as well. Oh, my God. You know what? If we took... <laughs> Some of you might hate me for this, but if we took on this one, rather than stability, divine marriage, we could marry our brother and then give him... Our daughters as concubines. This is some this is some real incestuous stuff. We could take our sons as concubines. You could take the daughters as concubines. This seems very odd. I like it, but it seems very odd. Okay, fair enough. Why not? Okay, thank you for the gold. Uh, yeah, let me see if I can work this out then. So, we need to mark them as not raiders. And then I think the way you do it is you just move them onto this one, right? And then we can mark them as raiders? Yeah, that actually works. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you for letting me know. All right, um, let's head off then with our slightly larger band of raiders. And again, getting the uh, the upgrades on the capital are my priority right now, just in terms of actual troop count, so that we can properly siege down provinces. Um, anything around here? France, you've got gold. Uh, not very much. I think we get more from... Yeah, we'll hit Bordeaux first, then we'll head south. 
We might want to head up to Brittany, actually, because those provinces we were actually able to siege down, and that will give us a shit ton more gold in return. Right, let's head straight up so we can find money or honor. Now, let's play for money. I feel like I can beat you. There we go. Apprentice board gamer. This is what I'm after, like I said. Game master would be incredible. Oh, shit. Hang on. We can take Hedonist. Hedonist, Socializer, or Game Master. Game Master would help out with the Martian Diplomacy, but the Hedonist would help out with the Air. Um. The Hedonist and the Master Seducer. Fuck it. Let's do it. Yeah, that seems appropriate. All right, why not? Our fertility between the two of us now. There we go. And funnily enough, instantly we get Babby. It's going to be my first child, and I feel completely lost. What happens if I do something wrong? What if something bad happens? What should I do while I wait for the day of labor? Pray for the child's good health. Rest and avoid any hard tasks, or... Gain general opinion plus 10. Oh man, that seems way better. That gives us prestige as well, which is obviously a win-win, seeing as we need that to upgrade all of our capital provinces. Right. Um, can I siege down any of you boys? No. No. And no. But we can steal their gold. Right, have we got anywhere? What about like Zealand? Zealand is normally a, a good gold place. Uh, no, definitely not. UK? Kind of in the middle of the Viking conquest, eh? So those guys aren't going to be best for gold right now. We'll just do our usual route. You know, I'll just stick to this sort of... Uh, Eastern France, that or Western France, I should say. Can I stop worrying about my unborn child? Perhaps I should make personal offerings to the gods. Um, you can do this, but it is much more risky for your health. Uh, I want to find out what this can offer us. So we'll lose the 18 gold and actually see what we gain in return for it. I can't imagine it would just be the minus one health. That seems... Ah! This is what I'm after. Now, seeing as we're already a strong, attractive... Hang on, we're strong and attractive. He's a genius, right? So let's go for... Beautiful and healthy child, strong and healthy child, bright and healthy child. That smart? What is smart? Do, do you mean quick? Do you mean shrewd? Do you mean genius? Um, I would prefer, I think, genius, honestly. Or oh, beautiful if we're going to play as a woman, though. Man, this is a hard choice. Fuck it, we'll go for beautiful. Because if we're playing as a woman, we want to gain all that opinion bonus, right? All right, that'll do in terms of rating. We will wait for the child to be born and actually see how good this character is. We're in the final months now, and we'll see if we were blessed by the gods with uh, maybe the true Igor Throog. Men spawn, troops despawn. Oh shit, it's a girl. She's weak. I feel like I've been, <laughs> I feel like I've been betrayed here. All right, um, you are not Igor. You are uh, Rogi. You are Rogi Throog. Not oh, Rogi. I'm gonna steal a picnic basket. Okay, um, you can be trained in. I'm honestly going to go with... I mean, oh god, she needs all that help she can get. Yeah, okay, you know what? You're going to be trained in, in in Marshall. A weak character gaining Marshall. That seems pretty appropriate. Why not? Rogi Bint Wilhelm of, of House Throog. Disappointing start. Thank you for watching. Hope you liked the idea. Don't worry if you wanted Venice. Venice will be coming as soon as CK2 Plus is done. So, have some patience. I feel like that would be the best thing for Venice as well. Big shout out to my insane top tier level patrons, Big Dick Timmy, Sean Thornton, Zachary Harris, Harik, Lucas Halting, Jacob Alexander Fenton, Jackson Whitman, Escape, Croesus, James Ogilvy, Paul, Conspired Scene, Necrophilum, Michael Mullen, Haydog, Orcs Wolf, Josh Lindeen, Tesla, Logan Thorne, Average Gamer 409, and I am the Lizard King. Follow support the insane tier levels on Patreon. Thank you very much for that. And a big shout out to Nathaniel Lindberg, Fukundo Vasquez, Felix Deal, Quet Lachley, Brandon Mintoniak, Paul Master, Everqueen is Waifu, Quasar Fox, Chris, Joseph Fear, Serthal the Swede, Nick, Sedini, Asaro, Jack Allen, Euphrates, Jordan Campbell, Yoran DeVries, Duncan 2207, Nathan Flores, and the many, many others for their support over Patreon as well. Thank you all very much for that. Hope you guys like the series. I think it's a pretty fun idea, and I think it's something we haven't really done before. Except for the last series, that didn't really count. That was just me pissing around in, in Holy Fury for a bit.